Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make them establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with the angels and the calmness they bring. Now in a moment I will introduce you to my wonderful guest Graham Harvey. who will be talking about the clearance protocol. But before that I'd like to say thank you for watching this show live at a later date as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Range and Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life regression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. I have also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Graham Harvey, who will be talking about the clearance protocol, which instead of dealing with symptoms, allows you to go straight to the root of any issues, gather them and take them to a disposal area and remove them. Now, Graham is an internationally renowned clinical hypnotherapist who provides guidance and help to clients and other therapists around the world. As a Reiki practitioner, he also deals with the physical as well as the mind. Graham is also the author of The Clearance Protocol, which is a very broad spectrum, safe and gentle way to resolve a very wide range of issues and is now in use by hundreds of therapists worldwide with views such as this clearance process Graham uses is phenomenal. Dealt with so many issues, some I didn't even realize I had, but wow. So my confidence now is sky high. The first presentation I had to do at work was a breeze. So without further delay, hello Graham, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Good evening, I'm pretty wonderful. Mainly because the sun's come out for the first time in three weeks up here in Scotland. <laughs> Just a strange, unidentified flying object, all yellow in colour, up in the sky. But uh, no, it's um, it's lovely. Um, feeling good. Um, very pleased to be with you this evening. Um, Brilliant. Thank, thank you for the invitation. Ah, oh, that's um, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing. So, before we go into this fascinating conversation, I would like to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Graham and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live or once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it the thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on all recordings. So please, if you are watching, do say hello. So Graham, why don't you tell us a bit more about yourself and how the clearance protocol came about and more importantly, how it works? Um, well, if, if I told you about myself, it would probably take war and peace, so we'll, we'll, we'll cut that down to the basics. I'm probably one of the world's longest surviving open heart surgery patients, having had open heart surgery in May 1957 um, at King's College Hospital near you, Ray. Yeah. <clears throat> um, went on uh, to become quite a good athlete. Uh, after that, and, and swimmer, uh, was brought up in Croydon, when my parents moved down there when I was about five, so I was brought up down there. Um, started work in the Metropolitan Police, and after six years, used the compensation money from my injuries to move back home to Scotland, uh, and bring my uh, wife and young family with me. Oh, wonderful. Um, <clears throat> From then on, yeah, I had 10 good years in the, in the Scottish police, um, doing lots of interesting things, and subsequently got headhunted into the security area, which I can't talk about because of the Official Secrets Act, and I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> yeah, um, fair enough. You know, <clears throat> but um, uh, I lost my first wife uh, to cancer uh, on her 23rd wedding anniversary, sadly. Uh, remarried three years later, uh, and unfortunately, um, she was lovingly re referred to by my family and friends as the bitch from hell. 
And I went through eight, nine years of every kind of domestic violence known to man. Um, so, yeah, you know, but when I escaped from that, um, and, you know, it's the usual thing, well, why did you stay so long? You know, we deal with so many victims of, of domestic violence, both male and female, and you know, nobody can really answer. There's so many reasons why you stay um, until, you know, the final thing happens, um, the final straw. So I, I kind of came out of that with um, what's lovingly referred to now as PTSD. <laughs> um, after my first wife died, I became quite spiritual for a while. It was like a bottle of gin a day spiritual. And uh, when I escaped from Madam, I didn't want to go back down that route again. Yeah. Um, and I was fortunate enough to meet uh, a hypnotherapist who did some work on me. And it made a heck of a difference. Um, and I thought, yeah, I, you know, I could do this. You know, I could help people. So um, I started studying in 2003, 2004 uh, through Liverpool University. Uh, qualified, um, got my certificates and everything else, and that was lovely. Uh, and started working. I, I managed to get a full-time job in the civil service for that time to, to pay the bills, etc. Um, so I was building up a practice, you know, part-time. And uh, looking at all the training uh, that we did and the different methods that we were taught, it seemed to me that everything was concentrating on dealing with symptoms. So if somebody came to you with a phobia or a fear or you know, an eating issue or as to it, that was actually just a symptom. And for a long time, um, I, I found the, the website LinkedIn, and there were a lot of hypnotherapy groups on there, which I joined. And I was lucky enough to uh, become very good friends with a very elderly Australian guy called Brian Perry, who is recognized as the grandfather of hypnotherapy in Australia. Uh, I mean, he started in hypnotherapy as far back as 1959. Wow. And he's still lecturing. But due to ill health, he's, he's kind of grounded, so he can only travel around Australia now. He can't, can't fly all, all over the world. But I've actually hosted him over here in Scotland uh, a couple of years back on a training course. And a lot of his work um, is based on research that Australian medical scientists did back in the late 50s, early 60s, <coughs> excuse me, when they identified the link between stress and the damage to the immune system and the psyche. But the research showed that it was the accumulation of stress that caused people to adapt, adopt coping mechanisms. But they were they usually fall into three main areas: either addictiveness, behavioural issues, or psychosomatic illness or disorder. That led me, through Brian's teaching, basically to look at the fact that, you know, if you're dealing with a symptom, the main teaching. Uh, the, the unitary t teaching, which is, you know, all over the world, is regress to cause of the issue. Now, there's, there's two ways I often describe it. What, one way kind of upsets people, but it doesn't matter. To me, removing a symptom is like a surgeon removing a tumour and ignoring the secondaries. Or, alternatively, we all know the story about the straw that broke the camel's back. If you remove the straw, in the back, you know, it's still broken. So we need to remove the whole load. And that allows the back to be healed. And then it can carry on with another load. The other thing that is also um, very noticeable is that if you only deal with a symptom, the symptom can come back 
after a while, or it can be replaced by something much worse. So with the clearance protocol, it, it actually came about, um, as we were talking about earlier, um, I was working with um, a psychic group um, here in Scotland, um, purely out of interest, and I found it fascinating. But the start of each session always involved a meditation. And there was one meditation we, we did, which was basically taking us into probably the Akashic records library or whatever, and looking at everything and being able to pick out the things that, that caused us any kind of hurt, collate it and take it out. And I thought, right, that's good. I'm going to develop that. But the important thing is, if you clear everything out, it is very dangerous to leave a vacuum. So that vacuum has to be filled. And this is where I progress with the clearance protocol. So with the, the way it works, basically, is that uh, under hypnosis, in trance, I take clients on a journey and I'll take them very relaxed, very safe, um, but I'll take them to a place where it's absolutely full of books, pictures and photographs. <clears throat> and every single book, picture and photograph relates to a moment in their lifetime. So it's all the good times, all the bad times. And in the center of the room is a whacking great basket on wheels. And I leave there, them, specifically their subconscious, to go around the room and remove every picture, book, and photograph, put them into the basket, anything that has caused them any kind of hurt, discomfort, upset by whoever, including things that they may have done to, them, to themselves. Once they let me know the basket's full, and that can take some time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, a, a good friend of mine uh, who's now in North Yorkshire, but when he was working out in Tenerife, had a client that spent 22 minutes filling wow. the market. But when she went to the disposal area, she spent 30 minutes getting rid of it all. You know, so uh, so I think Malcolm holds the world record for that. <laughs> but it, it means that, you know, I don't work on an hour session. I always allow two hours per session, purely and simply because you do not know how long the client's going to take to collate the stuff and then remove it. Um, once it's removed, no, I'll go back. What I found was purely by accident that you can also remove hangover memories from past lives. Um, and it happened with a, a client who had a fear of flying. Absolutely no sign of anything in his current lifetime that would cause that. So I suspected that it might be from a past life, but he would not regress. There was a massive block. So we did the clearance protocol, and then uh, I regressed him during the return journey, and I'll explain the return journey in a minute. Mm. It turned out he'd been an American bomber crew shot down in flames over Cologne in 1943. You know, but he just went, yeah, okay, fine. So that's it. You know, that was a past life. Gone, done, not an issue. You know, no more hangouts. Following day, um, he was on a flight out to South Africa. With wow. You know, um, <clears throat> so that's it. So as I say, once, uh, once we've um, gone through the disposal process, um bring the client back out and i mean i usually describe it as a beautiful warm sunny evening you know so tonight out here is absolutely ideal for this um and i often um particularly in scotland use beaches and the sea because there's nobody up here lives more than 30 miles from the sea anyway so yeah. you know, um 
different story telling somebody in Arizona to imagine walking along a beach when they're yeah. hundreds of miles from the beach. Uh, you know, uh, so again, you know, it, it's using visualizations that your client uh, can associate with. So yeah, we're, we're we're standing on the sand dunes, looking down over this beautiful golden beach, and this is their place. And I allow them to go down there because that's the place they can do anything they want to do. There is nobody there to tell them what they can or cannot do. And this is all part of getting them used to the freedom again. <clears throat> and I've, you know, I've, I've had some weird and wonderful stuff come out of that. One of my favorite ones was this lovely old lady. When she came out of trance, the first thing she said to me is, I'm getting a dog. Okay. Right, you know, she, oh, when I was on that beach with my doing my own thing, oh, there's a wee dog came to play with me, it was wonderful. I'm getting a dog, <laughs> great, you know, we, we, whatever helps, um, you know, keeps you going. Um, so I tend then, you know, after, after a couple of minutes, um, pick them up and head along the beach. Um, usually, well, it's always towards the sound of music. Normally, we're heading towards a fairground, um, and there's a specific reason for that. Um, and all the time, you're using different visualizations, getting the getting the subconscious to work. So I'll suggest things like, you know, as we're getting closer, you start picking up the smells, you know, like the diesel from the generators, then the fried onions and the hot dogs, and as we get closer still, the nicer stuff like candy floss and ice cream and toffee apples you know and they're aware that the fairground is, is full of lots of laughter and mm. you know, lots of happy sounding chatter <coughs> <coughs> excuse me and as we walk into the fairground you know people are all waving and smiling at them you know they feel welcome and accepted uh, and i'll take them through there um to a big tent at the top end, which is the Hall of Mirrors. And uh, once they're in the Hall of Mirrors and looking around at all these different shaped mirrors, lo and behold, they realize there's something different here. There are no distorted images. The images they're seeing from every mirror is the real them. And that's when we rebuild the self-esteem, self-confidence and factor in their desired outcomes so for things like weight loss for example you know a factor in you know whatever dress size it is mm. a, a woman wants to be um or weight for for guys um you know or whatever else it is they want to be you know more confidence you know as you mentioned earlier on you know confidence in speaking uh presenting to hundreds of people, you know, when you can't even talk to your neighbor next door. Yeah. All of a sudden, bang, you're there. Um, so that, that's great. And then, again, I'll leave them for, for a little while um, to, to go around and absorb all these images. And the important thing here is everything has to be in the present tense. So you're saying to them, this is who you are. You're saying to their subconscious, this is who you are. Because if you say to the subconscious, you know, you will be. Mm. Yeah, all right, I'll get around to that sometime now. It's in the future, you know. Mm. But if you say you are, it goes, oh, I better get that sorted. And it goes to work uh, and, you know, works on it. Um, so again, coming back through uh, the fairground, this time, they're not just waving and smiling. They're coming up, hugging them, shaking their hands, congratulating. So glad to see the real you back. Um, and then we come back along the beach. There's, there's a few little things that we had in there, you know, like I'll get them to look at the footprints they left in the sand going to the fairground and now see if they can find any coming back. Because most of them, you know, will say, no, I'm, I'm floating along here, you know. They're just so light and free and, and floating. Um, and it, th there's other bits and pieces to it. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that's the general thing. And then I'll bring them, you know, back and, and back out of trance. Often, though, if there are other issues, say, for example, IBS, 
or in my own case, um, I used to have sleep apnea. Then I'll sit them down on the beach in the lovely warm evening sand, looking at this calm, gentle sea. <coughs> and I'll get them to imagine, uh, for example, their intestine as a river. And they are the river warden with all the tools and equipment to keep that river flowing smoothly. And it's exactly the same with the air passage. The airway is just another passage through the body controlled by muscles. Mm. And when, when I was diagnosed with sleep apnea, I was sent to the sleep clinic in the Royal, Royal Infirmary in Edinburgh. And apparently I stopped breathing 170 times during the night. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> using this process, sleep apnea gone, level of snoring drastically reduced that's a good one which is a good one please my wife no end i can and imagine also, yeah also cleared up a lifelong sinus problem that i've had um so i again you know i've i've used that but it's always in a combination with the clearance protocol because we need to clear out all the garbage all the acquired garbage which then frees up the psyche and the immune system to work at optimum performance. Other things uh, I can do, and I frequently do, is instead of getting, to, you know, that's not an issue, then we'll look at things like future life progression. And I'll have them sitting on the sand and going forward a couple of years into their future to see where they are, what they're doing, you know, any changes that have been made. And of course that, when they're seeing how fit well whatever they are in two years time that's reinforcing all the time the subconscious and saying yeah you're doing a great job and you know this is what needs to happen um i've used it for past life regression as well you know when people say yeah well let's let's explore and find out um i mean one of the comical ones i had again was a, another fear of flying but this time he was a German World War I pilot shot down over the Somme in January 17. And when I brought him out of trance, I said, can you remember whereabouts in the Somme it was that you were shot down? He said, yeah, why? I said, because it might have been me that shot you down. Because <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I was on the Somme in January 1917. Whoops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah we had a good laugh about that one <laughs> um but I, I mean you know there's there's all sorts of things when i first started um and I, i'm sure you're aware ray that you know you will tend to attract clients that have similar issues to what you experienced or been through recently and in the early days i was getting umpteen people who had been victims of domestic violence um which is fine you know because i could empathize with their situation yeah. right away uh knew what they'd been through uh but the results that i was getting was phenomenal and people were phoning me up two or three days later a week later and saying Graham, what have you done to me? I haven't had a drink since I saw you. And, you know, we suddenly found that because all the stress and angst and everything else had gone, they were no longer reaching for the, for the bottle um, and drastically reducing their alcohol consumption. And, in fact, I had a number over the years that contacted me who said, Graham, I didn't disclose to you that I'm an alcoholic. But since seeing you, I cannot touch alcohol. It makes me physically ill. Great result. You know, they're, they're yeah. happy to marry. Uh, with the weight loss thing, you know, we, we don't discuss diet or anything like that during the process. And I've got a number of clients now that five years down the line, they've, they're still at their ideal weight. You know, but they made the changes themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just something that I love doing. But also, um, I think because of 
my dabbling in the psychic areas, um, you know, the, the intuition is is right. I mean, one of the situations I had again back in the early days, I had a phone call from a, a young woman uh, asking me if she could bring her brother along because he had a serious problem. Uh, he had a total terror of pens and ink. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so, you know, I arranged the appointment with her, put the phone down, and these ideas came into my head, so I wrote them down and put them in an envelope. And when, when they arrived, I handed her the envelope, said, you know, leave that until the end of the session, and I'd like you to open it. So took the guy in under uh, trance. He went straight back to the ninth century, where he was a monk watching his cell, and as punishment, was forced to copy the illuminated manuscripts. Oh, Lord. And, of course, the materials they used in those days were toxic. So he had, A, he was connecting pens and ink to punishment, to death, uh, you know, and all the rest of it. Um, but, you know, by dealing with it and taking his current persona back to talk to that, you know, he found out that what, what they use today is perfectly safe and happy and the rest of it. So, of course, when he came out of trance, he quite happily picked up a buyer and signed the client forms. <laughs> you know, great job done. <clears throat> but, of course, we went back through to reception to, to meet his mother and his sister. I said to his sister, you can open that letter now, which I'd written the week before. And it said, monk, illuminated manuscripts, locked in a cell. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's amazing how intuition... I think with, with a lot of therapists, even if they don't realise it, comes into play. But when you know that you've got it, it's, it's absolutely a, a, even more amazing. Um, and we've uh, had several people watching, so um, I've put them up, so just so we can say hello live to them. Uh, we've got Chris Tyler, who's watching from Belfast. So thank you, Chris. And we have... Uh, Rani. Hi, Rani. Thanks for tuning in and watching. And we've got Tim Castle. Hello from Sunny Crew. Yes, hello, Tim. See, now this is interesting, OK? It, mu it must be to do with, with being around up north because we've not really, we've had a bit of sun today down south, but we've not had a lot of sun. So we've got crew saying sunny, we've got you saying sunny, you've got sunshine coming through and I've got overcast and grey outside. And I've just so you're right. You southerners <laughs> are always getting the better weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Tim um, has said a uh, fabulous conversation uh, so far. I'm working on a past life higher self energy manipulation protocol at the moment. Um, so, he, and he says it's uh, so fascinating to listen to you. Well, so Tim and I are friends on Facebook. So, uh, Tim, if you want to have a chat about anything, just give me a buzz on Messenger. More than happy to um, help you out. Oh, that's, that, 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 that's, that, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, something I was, um, uh, when, when you were talking, that, that I thought about, which, which I thought was, 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 um, was, was really good, was the fact that you don't, you allow the client to release what they feel they need to release, to bring in what they need to bring in. You don't actually give them suggestions, or oh, you need to get rid of this angst, that that issue, you need to bring in this, which which I think is actually really quite quite good. It's um what a, what a, I think what a lot of people haven't got um, used to, even you know, hypnotherapists and all that stuff, is it's what we refer to as the subconscious, and I'll, I'll use the subconscious, although yeah. a lot of people don't like that term, but it's a term that most people understand, mm -hmm. you know, that are not in the industry. But the subconscious is basically the motherboard of your soul, and it contains all memories of everything from, you know, from the beginning of time. So it has all the information there and it knows what's caused the harm and what has caused the happiness. So if you instruct it, it's very, you know, it's very much like going on your computer. Your computer's not working properly. 
Uh, so you click on delete corrupted files. Bang. You don't know what files have gone. Yeah. But your computer is working at optimum performance again. Um, I, you know, it, it's a metaphor, but it's it's a good way of describing, particularly to the modern generation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, technophobes like me, you know, we think, mm. um, but, you know, it, it, it's all about that. And you do not need um, to regress people to cause, particularly when you're dealing with things like PTSD, victims of violence and all the rest of it. Because when you, re everything that you recall in your mind is happening now so you're actually returning and and you will know this right you're placing people back in a state of fear and alarm which is a breach of peace at common law yeah it, it it's that simple so it's you know basically we're actually breaking the law here in the UK, I mean, yeah. elsewhere, you know, other people have different laws, but I mean, here in the UK, by taking somebody back to, um, you know, traumatic incident, that is now in the subconscious mm. what's happening. So that, you know, whatever people say, they are reliving it. You know, they're remembering it, so they're reliving it. Um, and basically, what the clearance protocol is doing is deleting all negative emotions attached to these events the memory of the event is still there but there's absolutely no emotion i mean so much so in my case i cannot even remember what my second wife looks like wow yeah you know, it's just got i can remember the things that she was doing to me or trying to do to me can't remember what she looks like god that's amazing you know and there's um i mean it's that you know there's there's all sorts of other things um that have happened during my lifetime yes i've got the memories of them but i have absolutely no most emotion attached to them. you know like the time i was held hostage uh by a mental patient holding a sawn-off shotgun in my mouth for two hours uh you know yeah happened i'm still here didn't find out till afterwards that the gun wasn't loaded. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know that at the time. <laughs> you don't know that at the time. Um, and, oh, yeah, but, you know, doesn't hold any problems for me at all now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's the way I like to work. And I've, I've worked with, you know, a number of emergency service uh, personnel uh, over the years. Um, of course, you know, as, as you well know, there's, there's still strong resistance to hypnotherapy. Mm. Of, you know, the NHS, uh, you know, you look at the NHS website and we're all witch doctors. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the fact that hypnotherapy is the second oldest profession in the world is neither here nor there. You know, I mean, it was used in the ancient sleep clinics in Greece and Egypt and India. I'm talking of Egypt. Uh, you know, my, my worldwide audience has increased this week by adding Egypt and Mexico. Brilliant. <laughs> so uh, oh, it's, 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 getting, it's, getting, it's getting out there um, quite a lot. Oh, and Tim Castle has said it's really not that sunny. That <laughs> makes me feel so much better now. <laughs> ben. Yeah, well, uh, you know... Um, I'm I'm quite lucky in, in my physical makeup because I I go brown under a forty watt light bulb. <laughs> uh, my I, nose does the right, this does, the sun only needs to briefly appear and my nose well, just yeah. I mean, uh, my missus and I were out in Menorca a few weeks back, and she swears blind I started tanning on the flight out. <laughs> It's the anticipation. Right. So, you know, it's probably, yeah, it's in the subconscious. I'll be brown when I get off the plane, then it won't hurt in the sun. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Chris, um, interesting, said um, he's a former RUC officer with PTSD and severe health anxiety. Um, so, I mean, Chris, uh, if you 
if you use this uh, and are you are you using anything to help you um in you know at the moment with that and that you know you can uh, you can let us know um and i've got a lovely colleague down in bangor who uses the clearance protocol um so if chris is interested i can put them in touch with uh with her uh she's yeah. a brilliant therapist yeah and chris also says brilliant insight into the human mind fascinating to listen to and and it is i mean i've always loved the human mind um you, you know the way it works and that and we we really are so lucky that we have that human mind that you know that can work so well for us mm. and and that we can repair and we can and we can change um you know if 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 we want our subconscious you know holding and knowing everything about us that we don't realize in our conscious it, it's just it's just so fascinating um you know with with the mind and subconscious yeah, one of the little mottos that I always have is, um, is there intelligent life on Earth? Yes, but I'm only visiting. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it's so true. Um, because when, when you do the sort of work that we do, Ray, you know, when, you, when you're doing past life or future life, um, and again, you know, they're slight misnomers because... If, if you're into quantum physics and quantum mechanics and all that, everything happens in the now. So, you know, all these lives are being lived at the same time. So mm -hmm. and we're just flitting backwards and forwards. Yeah. Which takes us into another area of, you know, lucid dreaming, um, mind flipping. Um, I mean, on a couple of occasions, my missus has said to me, where the hell were you last night? I said, what do you mean? She said, my soul was trying to communicate with your soul and kept getting told, hurry up, because I'm busy. She said, where were you? And I said, well, um, I'm trying to remember, because <laughs> the problem is with these things, often, you know, the, the minute you wake up, you've got no recollection. Yeah. You can recollect some things, but not everything. But while you're in those positions, you know exactly who you're talking to, exactly who you are, you know, and could be different. I remember one uh, I had, I was I was a police officer and I was chasing criminals through uh, an industrial estate. And my mind's going, Graham, what the hell are you doing? You're 70 years of age. You shouldn't be doing this anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we, we get all, all these, all, all sorts of things. Uh, and I, you know, I, I love it, uh, but the one thing I will never do is play with people's minds. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's an absolute no-no. No. Every, every individual has the ability to heal. What we're doing as therapists is guiding them yeah. and, and giving them the tools to do that healing. Um, you know, Smoking cessation is another classic, you know. The, when I get phone calls, you know, people do do smoking cessation. Yep. Who is it that wants you to stop? Yes, exactly. Oh, well, my doctor says, bye. Yeah, my exactly. Bye. What do you mean by I said, come back and tell me you are the one that wants to stop. Yeah. Um, you know, and... and we don't have magic wands to wave, but if the client wants to make a change, then we can help them. We can yeah. provide them with the tools. We can guide them through the process and be with them during that process change. Yeah. Uh, and to me, you know, that, that's the beauty of this job. Um, you know, making people's lives happier, healthier, and longer. Yeah. And, and and watch and watching them develop into the best possible person they can be as well. Yeah, which, which is which is so amazing. Um, and Chris is saying yes. I've been working with Tim Castle and be with him uh, early July in Shropshire. So so that's so that's um that, that's that's brilliant that you know there's people yeah. connecting with each other in different parts of the country and working together. All right. Um, 
it's it's great. The, you know, I I enjoy being on different groups in Facebook. Um, there are lots and lots of people, you know, who are clearly opened up. There's lots of new people coming into the profession. Uh, sadly, there's an awful lot of Luddites uh, who are still stuck in the past. And a, re a really great friend of mine, Beryl Comer, who, who trains people all over the world, um, she recently on a post in a group uh, wrote something quoting Milton Erickson. And Milton Erickson said, if you continue to do what I do, you will end up living in the past. And this is something that I have found uh, frequently with the unitary training that's prevalent in hypnotherapy at the moment mm -hmm. is based on stuff that is 60, 70 years old. Um, you know, and others go off on the science kick and, you know, oh, it's got to be scientifically proven. Or it's been scientifically proven for thousands of blooming years. Yeah. You know, uh, but... Hey ho, we're all different. Um, I, I think the message is that you know if you're interested uh, and you want to come down the route of anything that you or I do or our colleagues do, then you know we're here. Yeah, exactly. There, there are over seven billion clients available in the world. <laughs> yep. So we ain't going to run out of patients. No, and then and there's and there's not enough therapists. Working with all these, all these, all, all these people, you know, we, we always need more and more. And I mean, Chris um, has sort of like said EMDR, CBT, hypnotherapy, and Harley Street with numerous methods. Also with Speakman's therapist, nothing has had an impact on my condition. I use mindful meditation as a way to control severity. Um, so, so yeah, obviously he's been using the protocol, but also med meditation. You know, that that to me that is one of the best things that you know that should be taught to children from literally when they go to nursery should be taught in prisons sh you know just should be taught everywhere so that everyone can learn to meditate because i think the world would be such a nicer place well that's right and i mean you know a lot of people are, are not aware that mindfulness has been part of hypnosis for thousands of years it ain't new it's just a couple of guys at a university in england discovered it wrote a book about it and now it's the latest things in sliced bread. Exactly. And another bandwagon that so many people are jumping on. Um, I, I, I noticed there, and I really had to bite my tongue, when things like EMDR and CBT came up. Um, I, again, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not particularly impressed with most talk therapies because basically what they're trying to do is stack goods on a shelf that's full. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you and you need to um, you, you need to uh, you know. And, and Chris has said, yeah, everything you have said makes so much sense. I can relate to. Yes, I live in the past, rarely ever living in the now, which which which, which is, is which is what we, we should be doing is very much living in the present, in 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 the here and now. Um, and that so 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 thank you um, for for that, Chris. Um, now although. I, to be quite truthful, Graham, I could go on talking to you for ages and, um, and we could really get into some quite interesting stuff here, but obviously we, we have a, we, we can't do that. So you'll have to come back on my show at some point in the future. More than happy to. Brilliant. So as you know, um, as part of all the many things I do, I do guided meditations and angel card readings. So every week what I like to do is ask my guests, um, would you like a mini guide to meditation, an angel card for yourself and those watching? So, Graham, what would you like? I think tonight I would really like a mini guided meditation. <laughs> yes, somebody's asked for a mini guided meditation. Do you know it's like everyone's <coughs> asked for that? Not range, folks. <laughs> <laughs> everyone always asks for an angel card. So it's actually really nice. I can I can actually do a mini guided meditation. So hopefully everyone who's watching this, um, you are actually not driving, which you shouldn't be anyway if you're watching this and you're nice and comfortable. So um, yeah, so if you just still want to close your eyes and as you do so, 
just take a deep breath in and on the out breath just let go of anything that doesn't need to be in this space at this time take another deep breath in giving yourself permission to totally relax and as you do just let your out breath just release anything that doesn't need to be here now and just allow yourself to go into a natural rhythm of breathing. Each in-breath giving you permission to relax. Each out-breath just releasing everything that doesn't need to be in this space. And now I want you to see, fully imagine or know, a beautiful golden light above your head. It's a beautiful golden light of peace and relaxation and just allow this golden light to move down into your physical body just allowing it to bathe your body your soul your spirit all your cells with this beautiful warm relaxing light and as you do just think about relaxing your head just feel your head relaxing and your eyelids so heavy and relaxed. As this relaxation moves down through your ears into your jaw, your jaw feeling the most relaxed it has for such a long while. As this relaxation moves down into your neck, and you feel your throat just relax. This relaxation moves down into your shoulders and your shoulders feel so relaxed. It's like there's warm sunshine just massaging them completely. As this relaxation moves down, you feel your upper arms relax, your elbows relax. Your lower arms, your wrists, your hands and your fingers. So wonderfully relaxed you feel. There's this beautiful relaxation. Just allow it to enter your body. As you feel your chest muscles relax. Your stomach muscles relax. The whole of your back relax vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae and now this feeling of relaxation moves further down into your pelvis your hips your buttocks sinking lower deeper into the chair it's this feeling of relaxation moves down into your thighs your knees your calves your shins your ankles, your feet and your toes and your whole body is just so relaxed. And now I want you to imagine yourself standing outside a beautiful mansion on a warm sunny day with a beautiful blue sky, the sun beaming down and there's a cloud in the sky. And you might notice a slight breeze over your skin. And as you're standing outside this mansion, you're at the top of five wide safe steps leading down into the most beautiful garden you have ever seen. A garden of your own design and making. And in a moment, you're going to walk down these five steps and into your garden. Each step allowing you to relax more and more. So if you're ready now, let's take the first step down five. Going deeper down the stairs four. Deeper down the stairs three. Deeper down the stairs two. Deeper down the stairs one. And you step off the bottom step into your garden. And it's a garden of your own design and making and can look, see, feel, imagine any way you wish. You can smell the flowers, 
or cut grass, maybe here a water feature or the leaves of trees rustling, maybe there's birds you can hear and see, maybe butterflies, it's your garden and I'm going to leave you for a moment or two just to walk around exploring your garden just allow in the garden to give you total peace and relaxation and a feeling of just being so full of life, feeling so wonderful that you are here on earth at this time. So just have a wander for a few moments. as you wander around the garden knowing that you're full of life you may suddenly get a flash of inspiration come into your mind flash of inspiration about where you're to go next what you're to do and don't question what comes in just accept it as what it is. And now it's time for you to leave this garden, remembering the feeling of peace and relaxation, the wonder of being fully alive and being present in the here and now. And that flash of inspiration or guidance that you've been given in whichever form. So you make your way back to the bottom of the steps that lead up to the mansion. And in a moment you're going to walk up those stairs from one to five. Each step, each ascending number bringing you back into reality. So walking up the stairs now, one, coming further up the stairs, two, further up the stairs, three, further up the stairs, four, coming fully back into your body, remembering everything, fully present, four, <coughs> back, five, open your eyes and breathe. And you've got the beautiful sun coming in on your face. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you find that? Um, yeah, that was really relaxing, as they say. Good. Um, quite enjoyed that. Hope everybody else did. Uh, yeah. Yeah, pl please, so, um, whoever um, was watching into the meditation, please uh, let us know uh, how it was, what it was like for you. Um, one of the things that not many people have done, but uh, I'm not sure if you've done it with, with Anne Jersh when you've been training on Future Life. Were you ever at any time taken forward a thousand years to connect with your future self and your future energy? I was taken, but I'm but this is my last incarnation on Earth, so I'm not actually coming back. So I was actually a black hole. I was the universe. Ah, because I connected with mine and it was like being nuclear powered for two weeks afterwards. Wow. I was surviving on like one hour of sleep a night. Um, <laughs> it was incredible. Uh, but on, on the first course um, I was on, uh, when I was taken forward, I ended up in 2359. Okay. Where um, I'm a doctor working in a clinic in Africa but my main task is teaching other medics mind healing to heal the body 
And it was interesting that I was still using clearance protocol. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I thought, now, how, how can I work this out so that in 2359, I can claim back all the royalties that have been <laughs> over the years? <laughs> <laughs> and have you worked it out yet? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my wife, um, my, my current wife, bless her, um, the, the third and final one, um, she used to be a banker and you know as far as finance and banking that's concerned she keeps me right so that would never happen <laughs> how are you going to prove it in 200 300 years time that you were yeah. uh you know i mean it's every bit as bad as me trying to say to the um ministry of defense you know could i be reissued with my medals from my previous life in world <laughs> war one but yeah, I, I can't see that happening. So. No, no, no. Um, I, th I think um, because of you know people's thoughts and all the rest, it, it would be considered an insult um, to uh, all our fallen, you know, to turn up. Yeah, that you were one. Uh, although I, you know, I survived World War One. That was that was another comical thing that came out because the guy that was regressing me, you know, we were at, so January nineteen seventeen. Um, took me forward to April seventeen. Said, "Where are you now?" And I said, "Oh, I'm in a nursing home in Oakhampton in Devon, and this is where my life ends." When we checked up with the regimental records, I had been discharged as no longer fit for military service on the seventeenth of April nineteen seventeen. So it was my military life that ended, not my physical life. But interestingly, my birthday in this life is the 17th of April. Oh, wow. See, I, 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 just, I just love the way that works out. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. Um, you know, and my, my current wife, bless her, um, a colleague um, did a, a past life regression on hers. And... Um, it transpired that she and I were in love with each other around 1610 in France, but I was much older and I died before we could marry. But, um, you know, so this time we've made it. Yes. But old enough not to have children to interfere with the relationship. Exactly. It's, 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 it's worked out perfectly. It may have taken all these hundreds of years, but it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's actually worked out. Um, Chris Saram said, yes, it was uh, relaxing, guys, which was wonderful. Um, Tim also said, yeah, really relaxing, peaceful. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rani found the meditation very relaxing. Thank you, Rani, for um, taking place. And Chris has said, um, guys, many thanks for this. You are very genuine people. And my thanks to Tim Castle for inviting me here. I've hit the follow to see any further sessions. Thank you so, thank you so much, Chris, for, um, uh, 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 for, for that. You know, um, Graham and I, you know, we we try and be as genuine as we as as as, as we possibly can. Um, you know, because we we are like you. We're we're the same, really. We're just in different bodies. And that. Uh, so, um, Graham, before we actually finish the show, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave those that were watching? Um, hmm. Do you want the controversial ones or the not so controversial uh, ones? Give us the controversial one. Um, right. Uh, we're already out of Europe. Mm -hmm. Um, and that case is going before the Supreme Court very shortly. Uh, the EU will not exist anyway in 10 years' time. And another one that, um, in fact, this is on YouTube, um, whilst train the trainers session, where I worked with Anne Winslow and she took me forward. One of the things I saw there was that in 10 years' time, uh, Syria is being rebuilt jointly by the USA and Russia. Brilliant. Now that, you know, 
that would be something but it's possible yeah um apart from that uh the sun's going to keep coming up every morning whether it's cloudy or not uh, yeah you know um and basically you know it's just do the best you can seek proper help if you think you need it um don't sit back and, and just bury yourself uh there is help out there uh you know and lots of us don't charge fortunes others do <laughs> but um i mean you know up here in scotland i i cannot charge london rates um i, I just wouldn't survive no. but you know th there's lots of us there's lots of colleagues out there we're all willing to help and walk alongside you as you make the positive changes in your life um you know and it it can be from anything um, as i found over the years with the clearance protocol I, I cannot get over how broad a spectrum it is and how many different things uh, it affects I mean, one of my favorite ones of all time was a colleague over in the states who had a young teenage girl brought to him by her grandparents. This kid had been suffering between three and seven seizures a week for over three years, and the medics couldn't resolve it. One session with the clearance protocol, and she's not had a seizure since. Amazing. You cannot buy that. You know. No. You, you just can't buy that. I mean, if you know, if I never do anything else in my life, that is just like a pool's win. Really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that is um, that that is uh, ab absolutely amazing. So, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this show and found it insightful, and that the words of wisdom Graham has given you will help you further on your journey. So, Graham, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Uh, well, I'm on Facebook. Um, I also have a page on Facebook which is Send Scott. And that's C E N. It's an abbreviation of Central Scotland. So it's Send Scott Therapies. Um, I also um, have a website, which is www.sendscotthypnotherapy.co.uk. Um, or my email address is uh, sendscott, C-E-N dot Scott, Hypno, uh, Scott Therapies at outlook.com but you know if anybody's interested all the information and contact details are on um facebook or linkedin uh you know so you could i'm easy to find and, and what i'll do is uh, um uh, i normally do a post after the show so i'll put all graham's details on there so you can just click on the links to find him um, which, 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 which will help you. So thank you very much for watching this show. And I would like to invite you to share this, share this video as I'm sure there are more um, people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, um, just like you. Now, if you've reached um, that crossroads in your life and need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me so we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minutes uh, video uh, call via Skype or Messenger to find out more about each other and how I can help you take charge of your destiny. And I will see you next Wednesday, the 3rd of July, 8 p.m., where my guest will be Elena Connolly, who will be talking about soul worthy wealth and how to activate your soul gifts to be wealthy. So, again, thank you for watching and thank you, Graham, so much for, uh, for, 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 being, for being a guest on my show. Well, it's been, um, well, one of my favourite sayings. Thank you for your hostility. It's been a business doing pleasure with you. <laughs> and on that note, we'll say goodbye <laughs> to everyone. Goodbye. Good Good night. Night. Bye.